The periodic table is a very useful tool for chemists. It gives a lot of information all on one sheet of paper. There are 118 known elements, and each element has its own box, like we see here. This is an example. There's no element ET. But all the boxes are shown the same. In the center, you see the element symbol. Notice that the first letter is capital, the second letter is lowercase. It's always like that. The second letter should never be a capital letter. Next thing we see is the Z. That stands for the atomic number. The atomic number is the identity of the element. Every element on the periodic table has a different atomic number. This is the number of protons in the nucleus. Next we have this A. The A stands for atomic mass number. That is the mass of the nucleus. In the nucleus are protons and neutrons. So mathematically, the atomic mass is protons plus neutrons. This number will always be larger than the atomic number, except for a few exceptions. The reason it's a decimal, not a whole number, is because this is an average. Not all chlorines are the same, and it's the average mass of all the chlorines. Finally, on some periodic tables, you have numbers in the upper right-hand corner. These are your electrons. Let's work out an example. Let's try chlorine. The symbol is CL, capital C, lowercase l. First, we have this 17. That is the atomic number, number 17 on the periodic table. But the atomic number is also the number of protons. So it has 17 protons, which are positively charged and in the nucleus. To figure out the number of electrons, we can do two things. First, we can add up these numbers. These are your electrons. 2 plus 8 plus 7 17 electrons. The other way to do this is to know that we're dealing with neutral atoms. That means the number of protons has to cancel out the number of electrons. That's not always true, but to start, that's what we're going to be doing. To find the number of neutrons, we have to do a little math. We know that this number is the atomic mass, which is the mass of the nucleus, the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. If we rearrange that, we can figure out the number of neutrons. The atomic mass minus the number of protons equals the number of neutrons. But you can't have 0.45 neutrons or protons. So what we're going to do is round that number to the closest integer. We're going to round it to 35. Remember, it's an average, so we're going to round it. There are 17 protons, so 35 minus 17 is 18 neutrons in the nucleus. We can now diagram our atom. We have 18 neutrons in the nucleus, 17 protons in the nucleus, and orbiting around the nucleus are the 17 electrons canceling out the 17 protons. Now this diagram is not 100% correct, but for now it's okay. Here's an example for you to try. Argon, number 18. Figure out the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons, then diagram the atom. Pause the video. When you're done, hit play, and you'll see a video walking you through the answer. Argon is number 18, so it has 18 protons. Those protons are in the nucleus. 
it has 18 electrons because electrons must cancel out the protons for a neutral atom. Or you can add up the electrons in the upper right hand corner. Those electrons are orbiting around the nucleus. To find the number of neutrons, we take that atomic mass and we subtract the number of protons. But we have to round the atomic mass. You can't have 0.948 protons or neutrons. 39.9 rounds to 40. Subtract the 18 protons, and you end up with 22 neutrons. Those neutrons are in the nucleus with the protons. This is how we figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for all the elements on the periodic table. Why don't you pick another one and see if you can figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons.